James Comey, folks, that's a name we haven't heard for about seven years now, over seven years. And remember, James Comey was the FBI director back in 2016 who famously was investigating Hillary Clinton's use of email in the email server in the basement, basically came out and said, you know what, it was careless, but there's there's nothing to prosecute here. And then two weeks before the election on October 28th came out and said that he was going to reopen the investigation famously came out and said he was going to reopen the investigation because of a computer that was found that belonged to Anthony Weiner, who was Huma Abedin, her husband, who was an assistant of Hillary Clinton. He was going to reopen the investigation because they wanted to look at that computer. Basically trashed Hillary Clinton's chances of being president in that election. So he was on Morning Joe and he gave input on two different things, and I want to play the first of which, which is the Cohen hush money trial, and here's what he said. In the arguments and then to the jury. So verdict could come week, 10 days time, hard to say. As you've been watching it, what's your assessment of how the prosecution has done? Much better than I expected, just having read the indictment. And of course, I've tried a lot of cases, right. so it's, it's dangerous to talk about them when you haven't been in the courtroom for every moment. But this seems to have gone in very well, built brick by brick in a, in a way that's not cross-examinable with documents and texts and the defendant's own voice, much better than I expected. And so my, I've told my family, I, uh, from the outside, I would think there's a very high likelihood of conviction, smaller likelihood of a, of a hung jury, very little likelihood approaching zero of an acquittal. Wow. Zero likelihood of an acquittal. And folks, the, the trial today pretty much wrapped up into next, until next week, and they brought Bob Costello back. The defense brought him back, their star witness, Bob Costello. We got to have him. We got to have him talk. And I think it was all Trump's idea. And I think it sort of turned out to uh, bite him in the rear end a little bit because Bob Costello came across to me like someone who was playing a catch and kill sort of game with Michael Cohen, trying to get him to trying to get Michael Cohen to retain him as an attorney. So because he had back channels to Donald Trump, as he said, and emails, he had friends in high places and all this kind of stuff. It's almost as if he was trying to contain Michael Cohen on behalf of Donald Trump, sort of a catch and kill thing like David Pecker was doing with the National Enquirer and Karen McDougal's story, catching those stories and, and, and keeping them from, from getting out. Well, I think Bob Costello was doing the same thing with regard to, Michael Cohen trying to keep his story, which obviously didn't work. But <clears throat> that was the the summary today from the trial, folks, and uh, it'll continue into next week. But the one main thing about it today was Donald Trump did not testify. What the hell happened there? Why not? Why didn't Donald Trump testify? Um, I was kind of looking forward to it, but it didn't happen. So in Morning Joe, they also pointed out that there was something that got... Um, sent around on social media that had something to do with a unified right from the, the Trump group talking about his next term as president, a unified right. Strange stuff, folks, but here's how it went. Uh, Donald Trump's Truth Social account posted a video discussing what would happen if he was reelected with the newspaper headline referring to a unified right, which is a word of course, associated with Hitler's Third Reich during Nazi Germany. Here's the video. The phrase Unified Reich shows up very quickly as part of hypothetical news headlines that announces Trump's hypothetical 2024 win. But if you look underneath the What's Next for America headline, the smaller headline reads, Industrial Strength Significantly Increased Driven by a Creation of a Unified mm. Reich. Trump's campaign spokesperson responded to the backlash, saying that the language was not used intentionally, sure. writing in part, this was not a campaign video. It was created by a random account I don't online it. and reposted by a staffer no, no. who clearly did not see the word while the president was in court. But the Biden-Harris campaign isn't buying it and blasted that explanation, saying Donald Trump is not playing games. He is telling America exactly what he intends to do if he regains power. Uh, exactly. And Donald Trump said this, folks. I want to play this clip for you. So they asked him about this. Um, you know, today, and here's what he said, folks. Have a, have a listen to this. Why 
<laughs> so typical. He didn't want to talk about it. So there he went. But they went on to talk about it, folks. And um, Joe Scarborough actually made some very good points along these lines. And have a listen to what he said. Rule as a dictator over a unified Reich. I think they took the post down now, Joe. Yeah, just took it down right now. John Heilman, this is the sort of thing. Of course, they, they explained it away. They kept it up. We understand uh, from, from Alex, they just now took it down. But this is the sort of thing. Again, if we go back and, and sort of search through the ancient mists of history. Miasma. Back to 2015. This is the sort of thing that if any politician... Any candidate, any presidential nominee especially, had unified Reich on uh, something that, that they reposted, the campaign reposted, the, the sound you would hear would like be brakes screeching to a halt. There'd be it's controversy. People would be talking about it for a week. People would be fired. Here, it's like a yawn. A unified Reich and they repost it and keep it up uh, for, 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 for quite a while. I'm surprised they took it down. Uh, but, um, yeah, it's just, again, the, the, the fact, we were talking about this earlier, the fact that a lot of uh, formerly mainstream voters don't care that there is a candidate out there that talks about being a dictator from day one, talks about executing the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff because he's not loyal, talks about putting members of the press in jail because they're critical of him, talks about being able to use SEAL Team 6 to execute political opponents and, and said the law can't do anything to him while he's president of the United States, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. We have people that are just quietly, uh, numbly, sleepwalking towards authoritarianism uh, and, and they're perfectly fine with it. Sleepwalking towards authoritarianism is a good way to put it. And James Comey actually had some interesting input on this as well. Here's what he said, folks, in the Morning Joe show. Trump may be reelected as president of the United States this fall. When you think about it, given your vast experience in the uh, Justice Department and as head of the FBI, what are the principal points of danger within the Justice Department if there's another Trump presidency, given his nature, given what you know about him? He is a threat to the rule of law in America. That's, to me, that's what this election is about. Not about policy differences. It's about what kind of country are we going to be. If he has the ability, smarter than he was last time, to use the power of the Department of Justice and the FBI to target his enemies especially, the rule of law in America will change in a way we haven't seen in our lifetime. When you say target his enemies, how would he do that? Well, I think Through the first justice. thing he would do is, is he would express it in his first term as a wish. I want people to go after so-and-so. I want people to go after Andrew McCabe, the former deputy director of the FBI. In a second term, he would go a step further, I'm highly confident, and say, I want him criminally investigated. And he would have, he was close to the bottom of the barrel in his appointees last time. He'll be at the very bottom. And those are the people who will carry out that order. I mean, it's an amazing recollection and, um, you know, sort of a, a hellish scape that he's that he's kind of portraying here if donald trump should win again it's it's what i've been talking about the rot of democracy and folks we've got to start taking donald trump at face value we, we just can't get numb to what he says and i've got a clip here he evidently was interviewed by a pittsburgh philadelphia uh, television station and they asked him about contraceptives and Listen to what he says. He just couldn't say yes or no, which basically means that he's looking to restrict them. And he's not, he's, you think he's done when he abolished Roe v. Wade? You think he was done when he rolled back all of those protections, you know, that women enjoyed, you know, for so long and all the, the rights that went along with it? No, no, he's not done, folks. Listen to this clip. Related to this is the whole issue of contraceptives. Do you support any restrictions on a person's right to contraception? Well, we're looking at that, and I'm going to have a policy on that very shortly. Yes or no? And I think it's something that you'll find interesting. And it's another issue that's very interesting. But you will, uh, you will find it 
I think very smart. I think it's a smart decision, but we'll be releasing it very soon. So basically, folks, that is a word salad that, that means that, yes, he is coming after contraceptives next. He is not finished. And he went on to say this. Have a listen again. Suggest that they, you may want to support some restrictions, like the morning after pill or something. We are, we are also, you know, things really do uh, have a lot to do with the states. And some states are going to have different policies than others. So translation here, folks, he will do what he can do within his power to roll back the use and the availability of contraceptives. It, you would think that they would have just been done at Roe v. Wade, but no, it will continue. And the it really depends what he's saying is the power of the state's laws that are in effect, but they will do what they can do where they can do it to roll back the availability and the use of contraceptives for women nationwide. Unbelievable.